my name is uh, Shrikant Narasimhan. I'm part of the Cloud and Network Services Group. Um, the topic today um, is going to be on Cisco Intercloud Fabric. Some of you may have had a chance to attend the keynote, cloud keynote yesterday. Uh, Intercloud Fabric was covered at length. And uh, we also had a couple of um, Intercloud Fabric API sessions right here in DevNet Zone the last couple of days. Uh, but what we'd like to do today is uh, you know, like to give you an overview of what we are doing with the Cisco Intercloud as a strategy and take you through a uh, level set through the Cisco Intercloud Fabric solution, but spend a little bit more time on the APIs, what functions that we offer, what can you do with that, take you through some code snippets, and uh, answer any questions. So we'll start with level setting about the intercloud. Um, so we use the term intercloud, and we use the term intercloud fabric. Intercloud is a strategy. Intercloud fabric is a solution that Cisco does. So we'll spend some time what does it do, what problem does it solve. Then we will take you through the programmability aspects of intercloud fabric. I'll take you through the API calls, API functions, code snippets. And uh, most importantly, when you walk out of the session, I need to help you make sure where you can get more information on REST APIs and actually how you can play on our Intercloud Fabric sandbox to get experience yourself. So I'd like to do that towards the end of the session. OK. What problems are you trying to solve here? Well, the world has moved to, towards a cloud of clouds. We've got lots of different clouds. We've got private clouds. We've got public clouds. We've got partner clouds. We've got SaaS service clouds, et cetera. The problem is that um, while it gives freedom, choices, et cetera, we are presented with a you know, heterogeneous infrastructure of different clouds. And what that means is that we are not able to seamlessly interoperate between different clouds. That's the first business problem you have. The second business problem is as a result of that, you want to be able to securely interoperate when, while doing that seamlessly. What that means is that if you've got a, on a private cloud, if you've got a network, you've got a firewall policies, when you migrate workloads from, from a private cloud to public cloud, you want that to be seamlessly be extended to the other end without you needing to do anything extra work, right? And thirdly, most important, when you have this sort of a complex clouds where you've got workloads residing in different set of clouds, you want to be able to manage those workloads in a unified manner across different clouds from a single pane of glass and be able to govern the whole policies, right? And when you do that, when we enable that, what that lets you do is that it opens up to a world of number of different asset services, especially around Internet of Things, SAP HANA, analytics, et cetera, not just on your private cloud, but wherever across this whole cloud, right? And that's where we want to we want to help the customers to go towards that. So the first problem we need to solve is to, we have to make sure those red dots are, can actually seamlessly connect across heterogeneous hypervisors, heterogeneous infrastructures, and heterogeneous uh, you know, VM formats. So Cisco Intercloud strategy is about that, about enabling that and solving that particular problem. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, you know, this is a Dilbert comic, as usual, what is in hybrid cloud? And you can read that yourself. Um, suffice it to say that hybrid cloud means uh, different things for different people. So this is a Dilbert version. But question is that why hybrid cloud, right? Why can't we just live with private clouds and the world will be simple and you can manage that? Well, increasingly, CIOs and CTOs and enterprises want choices, right? While public cloud offers economics, speed, and scale, balance it with the private cloud. Private cloud offers you control, security, and data sovereignty, right? So you don't have a single answer for everything. What you need is to balance the six factors, right? And you need to have choices you need to be able to decide what kind of workloads should take advantage of, of the factors on the right-hand side, 
what kind of workload should take advantage of the, of the factors on the left-hand side. You need to have a bad balance. Suffice it to say, you need choices, right? And that's what hybrid cloud enables you to do that. And what we do, Cisco's hybrid cloud approach, is that you've got a customer operating private clouds. You've got choice of the public clouds. We give you lots of choices. And through the Cisco InterCloud Fabric solution, we give you an open way to interoperate between the private cloud to any cloud provider of your choice. And doing that, we, we actually move you away from vendor lock-in. So it doesn't need to be VMware hypervisors or Microsoft Azure or KVM. You have a choice of the hypervisors. And most importantly, every cloud provider, they have their own VM formats. So we are able to actually interoperate the VM formats. So for example, if, if your workload is sitting in Amazon, Amazon has got an AMI format. And if your workload is sitting in ESX, and ESX has got this one format, Azure format. So we are able to make the format in a neutral way and make, make the VM portability happen across the different clouds. So that's the fundamental thing we are able to enable. So essentially, it, le it gives you the opportunity to do workload mobility across the clouds. And most importantly, you need to have a unified way of managing all your workloads, whether it is sitting in a private cloud or any of your public clouds, and you'll be able to govern your applications. So if you click it one level further, what we do really here is that on the left-hand side, we have an offering called Intercloud Fabric for businesses. Think of it, this is a software residing that you install it on the enterprise side. Oops. So this particular enterprise edition has an end user portal and an admin portal. An administrator can go to Intercloud Fabric for Business and kind of say what kind of public cloud accounts that the end user application should be able to access or move the workloads towards. The administrator can go and set up policies and create catalogs and expose it to the end users. Then the end user can actually consume those workloads and move it to any of the provider accounts that has been set up in the admin portal right here. On the right-hand side, we have a provider edition of the same intercloud fabric. The provider can actually go and set up the tenants, set up the accounts, and expose the tenants, uh, expose that services to, the, to their tenants. So that's how we enable the interoperability between the businesses and the providers across different hypervisor platforms. And what that gives you is a choice, the freedom. We talked about the six factors. We talked about the consistency, control, and compliance. That's what customers are looking for in this whole mad world of different clouds. So what use cases that you can apply to? Well, we have some use cases right here, but there are other use cases in addition to what I'm talking about here. The most common use cases that we have seen is a dev test use case. You may have a situation where on the fly, very quickly, on a public cloud, create a, a dev environment, finish developing your application, and move it back to your private cloud, or vice versa. You can do that, right? So you can bring back to the workload when it is production ready to the private cloud. So what this gives you is basically the, the time to market advantage as well as the agility advantage. Second use case you see is that shadow IT, right? The fact of the matter is that even today, lots of enterprises have to deal with the shadow IT. The businesses actually go to public cloud for hosting their applications, et cetera. Now, you can actually make sure that shadow IT is, is basically legalized and governed through this intercloud fabric, right? Third is capacity augmentation. So in the world of business applications, applications constantly need to scale depending on um, certain peak times. So what needs to happen is that those workloads need to be provided capacity augmentation on the fly, whether the workloads are sitting in the public cloud or in the private cloud. So intercloud fabric can enable this capacity augmentation seamlessly. Last but not the least right here is a disaster recovery. This is something work in progress. Now, how do you make sure for your application you can do DR, backup and recovery, seamlessly so that um, when something happens, uh, your application can seamlessly be switched to your uh, standby instance? 
Now, these are not all the use cases, but these are some of the use cases, common use cases that we have seen from our customers. So let me take you one level below. How does this work architecturally? So as I talked about earlier, on the provider side, we have an intercloud fabric for provider platform. It's simply a software that you actually install it on the provider side. So if you are a provider, get the, pro get the ICFPP installed, and what you will do is that you will basically create a cloud account and create the tenants and expose that provider to the left-hand side, which is the enterprise edition. And here on the enterprise edition, you have a portal in the form of an intercloud fabric for director, what we call it as ICFD, intercloud, intercloud fabric for director. This is the business edition. So the business edition talks to the provider through a secure cloud extension, right? And on top of this, we have an end-user portal, an admin portal. But that's not all. We also have northbound API on top of the enterprise uh, business edition. We have a northbound API on top of the provider edition as well, right? And the rest of the conversation is about what you can do with the northbound API, what sort of applications you can write, what, can you, what business problems you can solve. Because treat this northbound API as specific as a black box, and you can then look into that and program into this ICFD, and you can enable lots of different service offerings. A case in point is that if today you are operating your own private cloud, I suspect you have a service catalog today. So on the service catalog, if you want to enable new service offerings for hybrid cloud, with a few handful of APIs, after you install ICFD, you can actually create a new service offering into your service catalog that basically enables private cloud offering and a hybrid cloud offering in your service catalog. So that's a way to enable both um, private and hybrid cloud in, in, a, in a very fast way, right? So what I would like to do is that I'd like to take you through how that will look like. If you want to, you know, in a matter of minutes, download the software, install that, and enable a hybrid cloud service offering into your enterprise, how will you do that, right? So I want to take you through that uh, in the next couple of minutes. Well, before I take you through the API calls, I want to explain what kind of API functions that we have, right? We have a whole list of functions here. I'm not going to take you through the ent entire exhaustive list of APIs, but I'm going to take you through a handful of APIs that will actually quickly enable you to create a service offering, right? To start with, on the ICFD, Intercloud Fabric Director, through the APIs, you can create users and user groups. So what you can do is that a particular organization in your enterprise should be exposed to order a particular catalog that will probably create workloads in Amazon, for example. Another organization in your enterprise, for example, should be allowed to create workloads in Microsoft Azure, for example, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what you will do is that you will create user groups and users and provide them the uh, privileges for them to access which workloads, what type of workloads they can create in what public clouds. So that's the first thing you do. Second thing you can do is the network operations. What firewall policies that you want to enable, right? On, the, on, the, on your virtual data center level. So we have extensive APIs for that as well. Then the third one is around cloud operations. We talked about creating the provider cloud. Now, what provider clouds do you want to enable on your business side? So again, again you can do it through the APIs itself. The fourth one is about catalog. So once you create those user user groups, what catalogs you want to create for your end users? So that's the catalog operations. The fifth one is around service request. Once I order a migration of workload from a private to a public, how do you make sure that particular request is actually fulfilled? How do you monitor what is the status of the service request? That's the service request operations. Then the VM operations, it's about the VM lifecycle operations, power on a VM, power off the VM, terminate a VM, reset the VM, all those VM operations that you do on a typical, your private cloud, you, can, you should be able to do on your, any of your public cloud as well. And last but not the least is the administration operations. So let me, so the next one is around the provider side. On the provider side also we have similar APIs for setting up the users, setting up the cloud instance, setting up the tenant operations. So what I will do in the interest of the time, 
I just want to walk you through how, with a few APIs, you can actually create a catalog and move the workload from a private to a public, and then back from public to the private. So we have a REST API calls. It's a pretty straightforward stuff. But each REST API call has a certain format for the request and for the response. For the request side, they have, there are three parameters, op, op name, op data, format type. Op name is simply what action you're trying to do. Op data is specifically the parameters that an API expects. And third is an optional parameter, what format you want. You want a JSON or an XML format. The response would be the result of that REST API request. And if there is any error, you will see it in the service error. And the fourth, uh, third one, fourth one, is basically the service name and the op name. But let's actually look at an API call. Then you, you will get an idea of this stuff. I'm going to skip this slide. So what happens is that every user has got a user credentials. And the user credentials is provided with a REST API access key. Once you get a user credential, you can do a simple uh, get REST key call. And the get REST key call will give you a REST API key. And the REST API key, then you can actually set it in your request header, simply like this. This REST key can be used not just for the particular session, but throw, throughout whatever sessions that you do until you want to reset that REST API access key. Right? So this key is the one which lets you do all the, all the API calls. So you set that in the, in the header. And once you do that, here's one API call. User API get all catalogs per group. What this does is that if an administrator has actually created a catalog, for ordering a workload to move from one cloud to another, you can actually use this API call to get the catalog, what the catalog does. So for example, this tells you what the catalog name, catalog type is intercloud fabric, and it tells you that is an RHEL 6.2 version, and, and so on and so forth, right? And what, which group is eligible for access, et cetera. So then what you can do is that you can go and actually provision a VM using this catalog name that we just queried, call this API user API provision VM, and this one can actually provision a VM on a cloud of your choice. Right? You simply provide the catalog name, the target VDC, and it will come back with the return value of the service request ID. Remember that this provisioning of the VM will take a few minutes. So you can actually query the status of the request by the service request ID and knows what's happening, right? For example, this particular API call might actually provision a VM in Amazon, for example. And when, once you do that, simply do another call, user API get VM for service request. Based on the service request ID that you just got, you can query what VMs were actually provisioned. So this particular API call says that VM ID 18 was provisioned in the cloud name in DiData with the host name VM7. Right? And it could be that there are multiple VMs provision. It just happens that this particular request has got only one VM. Once you do that, you can actually move the VM from private cloud to public cloud, for example. So if you've got a VM in, in your private cloud, simply use this API call, and you can move it to a cloud of your choice. Right? So the parameters are pretty straightforward. You get the idea here. And once you move the API, uh, VM to the cloud, you can actually move the VM back to the enterprise, going back to my te dev test use case, using the API call, user API move VM to enterprise. So very similar construct. You simply provide the VM ID, VM name, the target VDC, and the data store name and the, uh, and the, and the host name. What that will do is that it will move the VMs from the cloud back to the enterprise. Right? So what I have just done is that from login to getting the catalog to provisioning a VM and getting the VM details, we actually have walked through how to move, move a VM to the cloud and back to the enterprise with, a, with a, just a few handful of API calls. Right? And what you can do is that you can actually go to that sandbox right here. You can actually try these APIs yourself and, and experience it. Right? Um, so the sandbox is available. The sandbox is also available um, you can log into dev developer.cisco.com and get an account and actually try these APIs yourself, right? Uh, here is a site, intercloud fabric site in the developer.cisco.com. 
You can go here. If you click on the documents, you get the REST API details. Um, then you can actually go to the sandbox, click here, right here. You get an account, then you can start playing these APIs and feel for yourself, right? If you're very happy, feel free to go and download the Inter Intercloud Fabric software. There's a 60 day trial there. You can install it on your enterprise and go much further. So with that, I also want to request you that in this particular site, we also have a community. We've got lots of code snippets there. I put a few code snippets just now in this presentation, but there are more code snippets available. And for example, there's a blog right here which, which tells you how you can do VM lifecycle operations with the APIs, et cetera. And you can join the whole developer community and interact on the rest of the API calls, right? And in the interest of the time, I just had a chance to walk you through the APIs on the business side. We haven't had a chance to walk you through the APIs on the provider side. The provider side APIs are also there. And we're going to publish it in the site. You will stay tuned. And you can actually access both the um, business side APIs as well as the provider side APIs. So with that, um, I just want to thank you for coming and attending.